Hey everybody, it's Kevin. A lot of you have been asking, so here's a video to give you a rundown of all my gear for my 2018 Appalachian Trail thru-hike. Okay, here's an overview of all my gear. It's kind of spread out all over the floor. So I'll try and sort of run through each of the sections of stuff so you can get an up-close look at what I'm bringing. First up, we have my pack, which is the Osprey Atmos 65-liter pack. Um, should be plenty of space. Not the lightest pack, on the market by any means, but it'll get the job done. And then since I'm starting on February 26, um, and just because of elevations and whatnot along the trail, I'm definitely bringing my puffy jacket. That one here is a Patagonia, just something that I already had. It's pretty light. And a fleece sort of crumpled up next to it. Um, a little pile here, and that'll kind of get me through the winter weather. Um, and along with that, <clears throat> Just in terms of other trekking gear, I've got my Black Diamond trekking poles. They fold up and they sort of collapse down right there, along with my Ultra gaiters that I've just started trying out to try and keep debris and rocks and things from out inside my boots. Over here, I've got my little sitting pad, um, just the Z Light small pad, something to sit on at camp. Double is a windscreen or fan of fire, um, multiple uses for that, as well as my camp shoes, which are some old Crocs that I had that I tried to clean up, but they're still a little dingy. Moving up from that, I'm going to be using the Big Agnes Fly Creek HVUL2 tent. So there you see the tent. Inside the tent bag is the footprint and the tent stakes, and then I have the poles just out separately. It's a very lightweight tent, but Plenty of room. I did not go for a one-person tent because I felt like I would be sleeping in a coffin, so the two-person tent is still really lightweight and gives me plenty of room to be comfortable in my mobile home on the trail. And then above that, I've got my sleeping pad. I'm not going very traditional on the sleeping pad. Most lightweight hikers seem to use either a foam pad um, or the Thermarest Neo Air Extra Light. This is a Thermarest Pro Light pad. Um, it's sort of a combination of a foam pad and a blow up pad. So you don't have to blow into that much. It's one of the things I really hate at camp is to try and blow up a pad. I always feel lightheaded when I do it. So I'm going to give this one a whirl. I used it a couple times. Um, we'll see how it does for the long haul. Over here in a compression bag, it's a Sea to Summit compression bag. I have my sleeping bag. It's a Western Mountaineering 20 degree bag, should be plenty. And then along with that, that blue thing is a Sea to Summit pillow, which may seem like a luxury item, but it's super light, only a few ounces, and um, it makes all the difference in terms of getting a good night's sleep. This crumpled up yellow <laughs> Sea to Summit bag here. It's my clothes bag. You kind of get a view on how much that is. That's really just my spare clothes for camp. Um, extra pair of pants and shirt, socks, sock liners to change out during the day, keep my feet nice and dry. Other clothes that I've got that I'm bringing due to the cold weather, I've got my beanie that I got in Cusco, Peru, so you can see it says Cusco on it, as well as a balaclava, which is sort of a combination of a buff and a balaclava just to keep around for when it's really cold, helps keep my head and neck warm, and uh, it's great for sleeping as well. And then I have some lightweight wind stopper gloves just to keep my hands warm. Above that, in this little orange thing, is a bug net. A very lightweight bug net. Help keep mosquitoes and flies off my face when the weather's warmer and not always have to use bug spray. And above that, I've got my Marmot Precip rain jacket. It folds up into its own pocket. It's folded up here. I like this jacket because it has armpit zippers to help with venting. Rain jackets tend to get a little bit steamy inside. And next to that, a lot of people don't bring these, but I'm going to bring them at least to start, are my Marmot rain pants. They're all rolled up here. I like to have the rain pants just in case. Um, it also adds an extra layer of warmth. If it's really windy, it helps keep the wind off in really cold weather, so 
Uh, I think it's something that I'll bring initially, may end up setting back later. Down here, below that here, I have my ditty bag. So inside this little three liter bag that came with the Atmo Atmos uh, Osprey pack, I've got a small journal. I have all my electronic cables, so I'm bringing my iPhone as well as a anchor power charger, and that's all in here. <clears throat> this will keep it all dry, uh, keep my headlamp in there, and a, a few other things that I can break down later. And then over here, starting to get into the camp system, of course, got my little trowel when I have to dig cat holes to do my necessary business, which is what this mega wad of toilet paper is here. I got this really thick toilet paper. It's what I had at the house, so that's what I'm going to bring along with a couple baby wipes. Um, it'll probably be the only time I ever have amazingly comfortable toilet paper on the trail, so I'm going to enjoy that while I got it. And then over here, I've got this little cook pouch that I made to help cook meals on the trail. Um, a lot of videos out online on how to make these. I made it out of a auto sunshade and some duct tape. Uh, more specifically, this is Gorilla Tape, if you're really into that kind of thing. So, this cook pouch should help cook my food quickly, save on fuel. I've got my Sea to Summit long handle aluminum spork. Wouldn't be a trail uh, hike without a spork, right? And a lot of people don't bring a cup. I like to have a separate cup so I can kind of, you know, drink while I'm having my meal, a hot cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing one, it doesn't really weigh much, and you know what, if I get sick of carrying it, I think it costs me $1.98, so I can drop it in a hiker box. And then, you know, just a small fuel canister. And in here is my cook pot. Um, right now it's sort of all tucked up in this nice little case. This is a Snow Peak uh, 700 titanium cook pot, really light. I've got it all wrapped together with some silicone hot lips help me keep from burning my mouth inside uh, two big mini lighters just for fire as well as uh, it's in a cup koozie which is made out of the same stuff as this which i'll break down later and here i've got my food bag it's a z-pax food bag i love the z-pax for its lightweight and durability and it's waterproof and here is the hanging system for the bear bag the cord as well as the little sack to put some dirt and rocks in to throw over throw the rope over the tree to hang the bear bag. Wouldn't be an AT hike without my AT guide. This is the uh, AWOL guide 2018. I'm hiking northbound so it's the northbound guide. Love that book. Super useful. And then down here is my water system. I've got it all tied together but Syringe for flushing. A lot of people don't bother to bring these. They either flush with a smart water bottle or just pick them up from hiker boxes. Eh, you know, it's my first through hike, so I'm going to bring it and see if I really need it. And then I've got the Sawyer Squeeze, which is the normal Sawyer Squeeze. And I've done a modification here, which I'll break down later. But this is a Sea Knock bag uh, water reservoir to collect water. This is not the one that comes with the Sawyer Squeeze. This has a big opening in the back, sort of similar to some of the platypus bags that are out there, but it's really sturdy. It'll hold two liters of water. I can squeeze it down or use this little tornado tube attachment that I um, learned about online and some YouTube videos to make a little gravity hang system, which I'll show you later. Over here are some random bits and bobs. I've got some Dr. Bronner's and a little scrub pad to keep everything clean in my cookware. Some Burt's Bees, a bit of Sawyer bug repellent. I'm going to bring the Picard in, trying to avoid DEET and see how this works. I've heard good reviews. We'll give it a whirl. Some hand sanitizer. A lot of people asked me if I was going to bring a big knife on the trail and uh, no, I don't want to carry a big knife, so I'm bringing this tiny little Swiss Army knife. It's actually a pretty amazing tool. It's very sharp. It's got a knife, a nail file, and scissors, little tiny scissors. And then in the top, you can see this little tab here. That is tweezers. 
And on the other side is a toothpick. Don't really need the toothpick, but the tweezers will be great for removing ticks, if I get ticks, which I probably will at some point. Here's my first aid kit. This I'm probably going to trim down a little bit. I don't think I'll bring this mole skin now that I discovered something called Luco Tape, which is this roll right here. And uh, Luco Tape is amazing stuff. Look it up online. It's great for covering blisters and it does not come off like the mole skin will. There's some random other stuff in here like acetaminophen, uh, vitamin I, as I hear hikers like to say, ibuprofen. Just the usual stuff I might need. And in here I've got my toothbrush, which I actually kind of did a modification and cut a normal toothbrush, not quite in half, but almost in half to cut down some weight. Some dental floss for my teeth and also for any kind of pack repairs or tent repairs if I have to sew. Uh, dental floss that's waxed is good for that. Apparently the wax helps to keep water out from any holes you might create through sewing something and some toothpaste. And then over here is just a gallon plastic bag that will be my trash bag along the trail. And that is really everything that I'm bringing, except for the clothes on my back, um, which will just be a smart wool and pants, um, socks and sock liners.